What is being combined with a combi rifle? What the heck is a Spitfire? We look at the weird and wonderful weapons of infinity in this episode of War Lore. This episode is dedicated to the common weapons of the human sphere. Future episodes will look at the arms of Ariadna, the Toha, the combined civilization, as well as anything I missed from the human sphere. We're covering 30 different weapon systems. If there's one that you'd like to see and wasn't covered, let me know in the comments, please. Let's jump in with the baseline weapon, the rifle. The two biggest manufacturers are Askari AS for Hakislam and AK Noe for Ariadna. Rifles are so common and cheap that the manufacturer hardly matters. Whether 3D printed or built in a workshop on Dawn, it's just a gun. The biggest change is the ammunition. Almost all weapons in the Infinity Universe use caseless cartridges with the propellant wrapping around the bullet. Without all those metal casings, they're much lighter. Rounds are also smaller, so you can pack way, way more into a single magazine. Assault rifles in the future aren't that different from what we have now, but the combi rifle is different. They're an over-engineered mess, and they're given out like candy to Fusiliers and Juncia and Davis. They're extremely lightweight and comfortable to hold. Recoil is suppressed to the point that they're even easier to use than a regular rifle. They have digital aim optimization and can automatically change their fire rate and recoil depending on the environment. Combi rifles are named as such because they're designed to easily accommodate a variety of weapon mods. Adhesive launchers, shotguns, grenade launchers, and flamethrowers all have their place on a combi rifle. Installing them is easy, and the sub-weapon integrates right with the main trigger. There's a wide variety of brands. Pan-Oceanian soldiers use the Dioc, made by Synetics. The Pan-Oceanian arms company FGA makes the SG-9 all-around and the SG-5 all-around too, both of which are very popular with nomads and mercenaries. Aleph isn't a nation-state, so they don't actually build weapons. They use another Pan-Oceanian combi rifle, the IPF Dardo, by Italiere de Precisione. Yu Jing uses the Yunggang Jing Type 4.2. Some East Asian militaries use Type the same way Americans use Mark when referring to military materiel. The Red Fury is a new development. Unlike conflicts of the 21st century, combat tends to be very concentrated. Weapons need to be compatible with each other and good at a variety of ranges. Spitfires are good, but they use proprietary ammo. Red Fury is a generic name for weapons that fulfill these needs. They're souped up assault rifles with bigger magazines and heavier barrels. They're grenades. The tactical possibilities of hand grenades, particularly in assault operations, are spectacular. Sometimes they're filled with smoke. Pan Oceania uses fancy isotope-doped nanotech to reflect light well beyond the visible spectrum, so they're even darker smoke grenades. They're called eclipse grenades, and I think they're pretty cool. Rifles in Infinity shoot heavier bullets than modern weapons of 2020 do at faster rates of fire. Personal protective gear is so ubiquitous that civilian clothing can be modified to be bullet resistant. Combi rifles were the norm, and they're good at medium and close range. Nobody used the submachine gun for decades. However, new light munitions has given the SMG a second life. A higher rate of fire means a higher concentration of hits. Getting full armor penetration is less important if you can pump 65 rounds into someone's back before they turn around. Whether you're shooting for the torso or the head, the submachine gun is growing in popularity. It's a much appreciated weapon by tactical police units, anti-terrorists, and special operations teams, as well as paramilitary groups and mercenaries. You're not supposed to use shotguns on people, even the little ones. Light shotguns like the Synetics Buxinero use clusters of flechettes with laser-aided target selectors to detonate them at the ideal distance to completely saturate the target area. It's pretty gruesome. You're really not supposed to use these on people. Originally developed for naval assault teams, they're cheap and popular enough to be used by infantry units as well. Boarding shotguns shoot flechettes, but also high-powered slugs to punch through armor. They exist in automatic versions with drums, pump-action versions, little ones, 
and big ones. Older versions, like the AK Novi Yarost, have simple pump action mechanisms that don't work well in zero G. Meanwhile, the Kerval Content 7000, the Toha model, has a biotech triggering grip mechanism which grows to match the user's hand. This shoots a length of chain. It's not a chain gun. These very illegal firearms were made for untrained militias in the bad old days. They heat up a cone of chain, then fire it out as red-hot shrapnel via an electric mechanism. Just 5 millimeters of chain and a cone of death. These weapons take no training and are very popular among paramilitary groups. The smaller version, the Chain Colt, has a small electrical trigger so it has a shorter range. However, the cylindrical magazine, which contains the inner feeding chain, allows for a faster reloading speed. Its compact size, which allows it to be easily hidden, has a shorter range, and lack of specific instruction required to actually use it makes it the ideal weapon for urban guerrilla warfare. Some Desperados even have versions implanted inside their body for close encounters. Spitfire is a category of light machine guns designed for close quarters battle. They have short barrels and stack hundreds of rounds of ammunition into a single magazine thanks to proprietary lightweight ammo. There are a lot of versions, and almost every gun is referred to as a Spitfire, and almost all of them have their own unique and storied development history. The Synetics Bago II was developed on the water planet Varuna, so it's waterproof. The Ascari AS Fateh has improved cooling systems. The Shasvasti one looks like it's made purely of pain. Fast drying, air porous, liquid cement. Loaded in big rotary magazines. Great for quelling riots or gumming up a giant robot. Praxitech LC makes all the best ones and sells them to the different armies of the human sphere. Except for Yu Jing. They use the Zhang Zhai, the arbitrator. The manufacturer, Jin Suo, successfully fended off a claim of patent infringement from Praxitech Inc. way back in the day. There's also a bigger version used by O12 called the Riot Stopper. That's it. All pistols are capable of burst fire. Specialized versions to shoot unique ammo exist, like the Ascari AS Toxin, which is a Hakaslamite breaker pistol. They're also popular with troops carrying really big guns for some reason. There are also big versions of pistols too. Heavy pistols can be used for big game hunting or overcompensating. The short range secondary weapons on tags also count as heavy pistols. Stun pistol is a blanket term for numerous weapons which shoot disabling non-lethal ammunition. Although the kind of ammunition used varies from the most advanced nanotech particles to electric dart, biochemical options, or sonic charge, or gas discharge, the purpose is always the same, to stop someone who is too close without causing permanent damage. Assault pistols are compact personal defense weapons. If your pistol wasn't shooting enough bullets, an assault pistol can help you shoot significantly more. The Mark 12 is like an assault rifle that shoots really, really big bullets. The name of this weapon is due to its ammunition, which has an appearance of effect very similar to the famous Holland 12 Grand Safari, used in big game hunting to bag prizes like elephants. I have no idea who's killing elephants in the Infinity Universe. Maybe they're hunting some of the genetically modified fauna on Borak. Regardless, the Mark 12 is an effective support weapon, but its recoil is so strong as to be almost beyond human limitations, restricting the number of troopers who can actually carry it. A heavy machine gun shoots gigantic ammunition. This is the sort of caliber you'd be using against planes or light vehicles in the Second World War, except a little bigger. Advanced cooling systems allow the operator to keep firing without the fear of heat damage. Every nation makes its own version of the heavy machine gun. The Nomads use the homegrown Praxitech Geistblitz for a while, but most use the FGSM version instead. 
Towards the end of 2nd edition, Corvus Belly started to sculpt the models with weapons that were bigger or larger depending on the miniature size. That's why you can see these female models with weapons that are smaller than their male counterparts, even if they should, in theory, be identical in size. The multi-rifle is an updated version of the combi rifle. They require significantly more training, both in learning the required maintenance and the tactical awareness of when to use it. In the hands of the right operator, though, they are exceptionally lethal. These weapons alchemize special ammo types, standard ammo bursts, and modular weaponry into a single package. Rather than using additional magazines, multi-weaponry loads components together to create custom cartridges on the fly. There are a few unusual types of ammunition in the Infinity Universe. Armor-piercing rounds can be manufactured with TCM, a neomaterial with excellent armor-piercing properties. They could also be coated with one-shot nanomachines designed to cut through armor. Explosive ammo combines hollow point and nano-enhanced explosive gel. Using it is prohibited by the Concilium Convention, but you can't argue with results. Double action is a category for high-impact, light-caliber ammunition. DA rounds are embedded with micro-explosions that detonate after impact for a one-two punch. Breaker rounds are designed to bypass and degrade biotech shielding and use a variety of delivery mechanisms. The name refers to the technical expression breakthrough time, a criterion used in the evaluation of CBRN protection that measures the time until the hazardous agent reaches the body. Old, but popular, rocket launchers are shoulder-mounted weapons with the huge magazines of solid propulsion micro-rockets. They're primarily used against infantry. Modern rocket launchers are based on the Hydra 90 projectile series, an evolution of the PFFR, or Portable Folding Fin Rocket, Mark 25, developed in the middle of the 21st century. Missile launchers have two options, a blast mode for external damage and a hit mode for internal damage. There are also guided versions called Dancers, which use data provided by a forward observer for an extremely accurate guided attack. Unlike rocket launchers, missile launchers are mostly used to penetrate hard targets. Forward observers are specialists armed with the tool to provide their allies with telemetry and data on the exact location of hostiles. They often carry the Flash Pulse, a sophisticated weapon that emits a focused beam of light or data towards a target to disorient or disable them. Marksman rifles are reconfigured rifles designed to engage targets at a long distance. They're heavier and bulkier, and therefore worse at close ranges. They have telescopic sights, operate in semi-auto or burst, and they use the same ammunition as their parent rifles. Sniper rifles are precision weapons with such long-range accuracy that they can dominate an entire battlefield. A well-placed marksman rifle armed with one of these weapons can potentially deter the advance of a whole army. Wealthier nations equip their troops with a multi-sniper rifle. Basic models have multiple magazines and interchangeable or rotating systems, while the more sophisticated versions use adaptive ammunition that is altered in-chamber to suit the needs of the operator. Carrying only a multi-sniper rifle, a sharpshooter can switch seamlessly between an anti-tank gun capable of piercing thick armor and an anti-personnel weapon that can neutralize even the most resilient targets. On the tabletop, they can shoot up to 96 inches. Considering that the standard game is 48 inches by 48 inches, that means you can use them to shoot into other games. Next time you're playing Infinity at a game store, see if you can pick off miniatures from other tables. The Führerbach is made by Franco-Germanique Armaments, and is possibly named after Ludwig Andread Führerbach. Living in the 19th century, Ludwig Feuerbach had a critical role in post-Hegelian German philosophy and in their transition from idealism to naturalism, materialism, and positivism. He was deeply influential on Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels while they were writing The Condition of the Working Class in England, as well as The Communist Manifesto. Feuerbach was against the concept of personal immortality, proposing a type of immortality by which human qualities are reabsorbed into nature. His notion was that God was the outward projection of man's inward nature. To Feuerbach, God's aspects corresponded to the different needs of human nature, love, law, and understanding. The Feuerbach shoots explosive fireballs.
Also designed by Franco-Germanic armaments, the modern Panzerfaust is similar to the old 20th century weapon in that it is a disposable anti-tank launcher. They have two shots, are very unsubtle, and are light enough to carry along with other gear. A contender is not a weapon, but instead a term for a variety of weapons with a similar history. The most popular sport in the human sphere is Aristea, and the most popular weapon in Aristea is the humble Contender. They have a low rate of fire and high stopping power. Despite seeing some military use, their biggest market remains Aristea fans and fighters, with prices driven by marketing rather than any actual difference in utility. The iconic version is the Tauru SW Duelist, the basic undisguised model. There's also the Styrock Carb 8, which is disguised as a conventional carbine. The Synetics FLX line is actually built into personalized armor forearms. Finally, the Goa Dynamics Bujang series incorporate custom-grown Reptilo scale inlays and AR effects to complete the wielder's look. Lastly, we have the e Mitter and e Marat, but the tech in them can apply to any weapon with EM ammunition. A burst of high-energy electromagnetic pulses can shred Quantronic systems and even disable powered armor. Heavier versions, like the e Marat, which is named for power in Arabic, feature multiple EM pulse emitters for extra effectiveness. So, why are they illegal? Well, they turn off your cube. You wouldn't want to lose your cube, would you? Okay, I'll cover cubes more in a different video, but a cube is a wetware cranial implant that combines Quantronic processors with silk-based technology. They monitor synaptic connections and brain architecture, noting any changes and updating the Shayut backup in real time, right up to the moment of death. They are extremely durable, requiring special effort to damage or destroy. However, EM ammunition can deactivate your cube, and if you get shot while you're on the battlefield and you don't have a cube... well. You want a plan B if the medic can't heal you. So, you wouldn't want to turn off your cube. Uh, Alright, what was that? Like, 30 weapons? I think that's enough for now. As you can see, there's a wide variety of weapons in the Infinity Universe, and many don't clearly correspond to our modern conception of combat. But we're definitely not done, and at some point I'll have to go back and cover the rest. If you think I missed any, or there's any that you still don't understand, ple please leave a comment below so I know what to cover. Next video should have less explosions focused more on why I find the setting so interesting. Until then, stay safe, don't forget to reload, 